Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and then the Shrek Games to the Come video. We're going to be talking all about the PlayStation 4 Pro, since it seems to be very much in the news right now. Seems a good idea. Mark Cerny has recently had an interview with AV Watch, which is a Japanese website. I'll link the interview below. You'll need to run it through Google Translate. During this interview, he tackles multiple different points, including checkerboard rendering, the PlayStation 4 Pro's GPU, uh, development process, and so on. Before I jump into that fully, I want to give a couple of small notes. Note A, there is a lot of background noise, which will be whiz, pops, and bangs. And no, I've not been teleported into a war zone. It is fireworks night in the UK. Well, not exactly, but it's very close. And therefore, because fireworks are on sale, people are deciding to let them off early. Um, and there's not much I can do about it. I've tried to re-record this video two or three times now, and I will literally go insane if I continue to do that. So it's going to have to just be the best it can be, unfortunately. So if you find the pops and bangs annoying, I can only apologize. I'll do my best to remove the more grievous ones, but there's only so much I can do. Fortunately, they're being rather quiet at the moment, which is why I'm deciding to take the opportunity to re-record. Now, I probably cursed myself, haven't I? For the individuals who are messaging me on Facebook and Twitter regarding the PS4 Pro analysis that I'm working on, yes, I am still going to be releasing it. It's just taking a while. A couple of reasons. A, I have been sick since Thursday slash Friday. I developed a really bad cold, which basically meant that I was out of action. Um, I just, to be honest with you, have really bad sinuses and I, a headache and I just couldn't really do much. And then Amy decided, well, Pre decided to go to Expo London Comic Con, so I was taking over some of the work there. And also, to be totally frank with you, this analysis is really in depth. I'm currently up to about 4,600 words, and I have about 50 different tabs open in different web browsers um, where I'm actually doing research on to compute um, various developer. Um, presentations on wavefronts and how they interact across the GCN architecture, optimizations on developing for the consoles, especially the PS4, um, iteration of GCN, especially for Polaris and a few other bits and bobs, because basically I want this video to be the best it can be, and I don't want to just talk about what's been said by Mark Cerny, I really want to explain it and give my two cents on it. Therefore, it's going to take a lot longer, unfortunately, but I would rather it be delayed a couple of days and be proud of the work rather than just throw it up there just for the sake of views, which I personally think is the best way to handle things, and hopefully you'll agree. Anyway, enough of that preface, let's get on with the interview. So as I said, it's pretty lengthy, and I will link it in the video description, um, and you all, once again, unless you natively speak or rather read Japanese, you're going to need to run this through Google Translate, but... I will focus on some of the big talking points. I'm not going to use verbatim quotes because <clears throat> at the end of the day it is running through Google Translate and therefore verbatim quotes don't really work. Google Translate is more a gist rather than a complete accurate as you probably are aware. Anyway, so one thing that I made abundantly clear once again is the importance of checkerboard rendering. Now. I've mentioned checkerboard rendering a couple of times over, so I don't want to spend too long focusing on it in this particular video. However, checkerboard rendering is been very much um, in the news a lot recently with the PS4 Pro. However, it was also shown off quite extensively by Ubisoft with Rainbow Six. Uh, so, if you want that out, uh, if you want to see that, you should definitely check out uh, Ubisoft. Rainbow Six Siege, GDC, you can do a Google search and it will pop up if you do want to see that um, <clears throat> that presentation. But what it basically does is it renders the image in tiles. It's basically a grid-like fashion, the effects of high resolution, but it does the best possible. There can be some image softness, which has definitely been present in a couple of games, and also a couple of oddities. Um, you can actually notice those if you watch... Infamous Seconds, no, Infamous Infamous First Light, that's the damn name of it. If you check out Infamous First Light, the trailer, run it in high um, 
at like 4K, even if you've got a 1080p screen and look really closely at the light trails, you can see there is some softness there, which is inherent with checkerboard rendering. But generally speaking, it does a really nice job. However, Mark Cerny did mention that 4K can be achieved by a, G a GPU of t uh, 4 teflops. Um, and this is mostly down to the fact that essentially they are doing the checkerboard rendering. Now, there are some issues, of course, with running the SOC 16 FinFET, uh, one second, also dealing with a cold, which is super helpful. But because they're dealing with a 16NM FinFET process, despite the fact that the GPU is obviously a lot smaller in terms of the um, size of the actual silicon and the transistors inside it, the fact of the matter is they're also packing in a lot of additional GPU cores. And that means that that's why the PS4 Pro's body is a lot larger. Because the GPU scale has doubled uh, and the size of the stock has increased, it's increasing the heat generation. And therefore, according to Cerny himself, they've needed a larger body to cool the PS4 Pro, which was, well, pretty well known anyway. But essentially, according to him, compared to the first generation of the PS4, the volume, the pure size of the machine is about 19% larger. So in effect, you're looking at a machine that's just under a quarter of the size larger than your vanilla PS4 Pro. That's not the slim. So if you own a PS4, uh, a regular vanilla PS4, and you're imagining a system that's about 20-ish percent bigger, that's the size of the PS4 Pro, which, to be honest with you, isn't terrible. It's going to be just about... A tiny bit smaller than the Xbox One, I imagine. It's kind of hard to visualize sizes because obviously they're slightly different shapes and all, but still. Now, what he did say is that the game itself, if they want to render natively in 4K, and this is his personal estimate, and I would add that in my opinion, this is a bit of a shot at Microsoft because Microsoft with Project Scorpio has been rather boisterous when it comes to the fact that they claim that they can render natively at 4k with their six teraflops of gpu performance however to cerny to render natively at 4k in his personal estimates six teraflops is the minimum required and that's why to him they believe that they've done the ps4 pro how they have essentially what their argument is and I'll definitely tackle this more when I'm going through my technical analysis of the PS4 Pro. But essentially, Sony are going for the... I, I guess the best term, although it's not a technical term, is the small, sleek, smart. Now, what that basically means is they've gone for the easiest ways to increase the performance of the console. So I guess you could say bang for buck. In other words... You could argue that some parts of the machine are kind of unbalanced. Like, you could argue that there's not enough GPU memory. You could argue that the CPU isn't fast enough. But there are reasons they've done it. And I'm not saying that necessarily it's the best. Because ultimately we won't know that until the Scorpio comes out or the PS4 Pro. For example, one of the reasons that they've chosen still to run the Jaguar, even going over the Puma which, by the way, is a slight evolutionary design of the uh, Jaguar, is because, according to Cerny, they were concerned that the 700 or so titles that they've currently got available for the PS4 Pro may or may not, sorry, for the original PS4, may not simply work on the PS4 Pro if they were to run a slightly different x86 architecture due to timings. Another thing that was harped on about quite a bit is the fact that the PS4 Pro incorporates a lot of stuff, what they needed from the Polaris architecture. Remember, Polaris is the current architecture from AMD, although what we do know is they've also grabbed some technology from an upcoming architecture. We can assume at Vega, which is the next generation GPU from AMD. Now, according to Cerny, once again, this is not an exact quote, simply because, well, Google Translate and exact quotes don't exactly go well. But according to him, one of the big things from Polaris was the improved versions of tessellation. Now, this basically means that splitting up the polygon um, and actually creating the scenes, especially when you're starting to deal with technologies such as raw triangle throughput. Now, basically, and I 
have gone much deeper into this in my PS4 Pro analysis. I know I keep mentioning that, but I don't want to make this video super duper long. Uh, mostly because my voice probably wouldn't survive it, to be honest. Uh, as you can probably tell, I'm kind of coughing a little bit in the background, hence why I keep needing to pause, unfortunately. But one of the reasons Tessellation was first introduced into graphics APIs was to counter the fact that 3D models and level of details have been issues for some time. Basically speaking, as models, so for example characters, enemies, cars, whatever, go forward or backwards towards the viewpoint of the camera, at the most sensible way of putting that is let's say you're playing a first person shooter and you are looking at a tree that is quite some distance away right so it's quite a distance away and you start going towards that tree now there's no point having that tree have the same number of polygons in other words a very high number at a large distance compared to a very close distance the reason behind that is that you're just basically eating up draw calls you're eating up performance from the GPU um, basically you are starting to eat up instructions from that GPU and that's a bad thing therefore vertex um, I'm sorry tessellation was there to help to increase that it's basically for 3d models and character artists so as for example a face gets closer to the camera you can start to add in subtle muscles joints and uh, dents in the face and that type of thing so at further distances fewer triangles are needed to accomplish the same aesthetic because just like in real life, if you're looking at something from a large distance, you can't see all of those inherent details. Therefore, there's not necessarily a reason to render those. There are also major improvements when it comes to anti-aliasing techniques. Now, AA, just for those of you who do not know, is at its simplest a way to smooth um, the geometry, especially, let's say, stepping. Have you ever seen an image, a 3D image, where you can see inherent stepping, for example, a line which is supposed to be straight, but it's, let's say, at a 45 degree angle, and you can definitely see some stair stepping. The idea of anti-aliasing is it smooths that out so that the the um, geometry looks a lot smoother and much more lifelike. So with the PS4 Pro, they're doing a much better job. As a triangle is created, basically it will figure out will this triangle is there a part of this triangle which is basically wrong so it shouldn't be there it's outside what should actually be drawn and that can be very helpful when it's actually starting to do depth correction or starting to actually do edge detection the problem is that previously edge detection has been notoriously taxing on GPUs and that's one area that the PS4 Pro is starting to tackle and hopefully some of the efficiencies like for example primitive discard accelerator which in a nutshell removes triangles which are too small to affect the overall look of a rendered scene. In other words it will intelligently nuke rendering tri triangles. Um, by the way triangles of course are the building blocks of geometry used to draw the in-game worlds. So if it feels that they're unimportant they're being blocked or whatever zero um, zero area triangles which are basically simply just garbage um, and therefore once again it's all about efficiency I have to say recording a video and also reading Google Translate a little more difficult next time I think I'm gonna make some additional notes before I record um, so overall the PS4 Pro is definitely a I don't necessarily think it's the console that a lot of people had hoped. I think a lot of folks had expected the PS4 Pro to be like a 6 to 7 TFOP machine, probably bake them a um, you know set of cookies every day, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not upset with the PS4 Pro's technical specifications. I wish they had been a bit higher. I think many of us had expected a panicked upgrade of sorts for the PS4 Pro, especially when we heard Microsoft announce the 6T flops of the Xbox Scorpio. But I have a few feelings as to why they've not done that. One is the pricing. Basically, they didn't want to go above 349 or whatever it is in your region. Second, and this one's a pretty big one, I have a feeling that they figured that if they were to increase the system to let's say 5.2 T-flops just for example which they could do by simply increasing the clock speed of the GPU 
what would have immediately happened is Microsoft would be like, oh, okay, then, well, we're going to do the same and go to, like, seven flops. In other words, I probably would guess Microsoft would keep the disparity between the two systems. And the third is that if they are having issues or concerns with timing between, let's say, the moving from a Jaguar architecture to, let's say, a Puma or whatever, probably they would imagine that if they just increase the GPU performance a little more, all they're going to do is increase the disparity between the CPU and the GPU, and therefore that's probably why they didn't do it. Now, one could make an argument that mid-generation upgrades and all that are going to be the doom of consoles. I don't know. I mean, I, I personally don't really have a problem with the generation upgrade as a theory. The only issue I've got is that you're starting to get to the point where consoles, if they do start upgrading every couple of years, and it becomes a pretty standard affair, consoles then don't really become that much cheaper or that much more convenient than a PC. So there is that. But anyway, I would encourage you to check out the interview. There is a lot more stuff in this interview. Unfortunately, a lot of it has been covered before, so I definitely recommend you check it out. But there are a couple of notes. Definitely one of the big things is that Sony also don't want to increase the amount of work developing a PS4 Pro version that much more than a base version. In short, they want the PS4 Pro version of the game to be 1%-ish of total development time. So in other words, one or two programmers working part or full time on that game should be able to get the PS4 Pro version running. Now you can imagine how they could start doing that. They could natively uh, work on, let's say, running at a higher frame rate. They could increase the texture quality or rendering distances, level of detail. They could run inherently at a um, higher internal resolution, extra shadow details or whatever they're doing. And naturally as well, they could always develop the PS4 Pro version as I guess the base or target version of the game and then simply downgrade for the regular PS4. It's even going to be less of an issue to be honest if you're co-developing a PC version because if you're co-developing a PC version you've already got those super high resolution assets that you can simply borrow from the PC version anyway or at least derivatives thereof therefore it's less of a big deal. So, there is that. I personally am kind of looking forward to the PS4 Pro. I'm not, oh my god, this is going to be the best thing ever. But I am very curious to see how the next year in gaming is going to take place. And I'm very, very, very anxious to see how Microsoft and how Sony both handle the launches of their games. And also, how the vanilla version of games, especially for first party games, versions of games, is going to be different. For example, is it going to be to the point where there is so much of a disparity between the first generation, I'm sorry, first party versions of games that you're much better off buying a PS4 Pro version? Sony are saying no now, but obviously there are those concerns. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.